Right, a lot of people have been asking how ram pumps work. Um, I've basically just gone to greenandcarter.com. This is the uh, people who make who make that ram pump that we've got. Um, they got a brilliant diagram to show you how the pump itself works. Um, basically, you've got the header tank. You've got the straight drive pipe going down to the ram itself. Then, basically, just he just here there is a rubber valve what that does as the water rushes through rushes down through here out through the um, the valve, rubber valve and as the water velocity um, increases it will snap shut and then the only place for the water to go is up through this one-way valve into this buffer vessel the buffer vessel is only there really to take the shock away and to produce a um, a constant stream instead of like just like little bits of water coming out the uh, outlet pipe. It will keep a constant running water and it just takes the shock away to save it um, breaking itself to pieces. And as that that will lift, when the water will flow up to like a head to a header tank, um, in which in our case is at the top of the hill, and as as the pressure reduces in here, this one way valve will close. This one here will open because of the lack of pressure behind it, allowing water to start rushing through again to allow it to um, to snap shut, to let more water up, and for it to uh, just carry its process going over and over again. Right, go to greenandcarter.com then go to products where's the button there it is and then go to how they work when you're on how they work you see a diagram click on the diagram and then you get this right I've um I found the uh, information about our ones on the Green and Carter website um, if you want to see our ones, um, if I just go to the home page a minute, so you go to the green and oops, hang on, here we go. So you go to the Green and Carter homepage, so just greenandcarter.com. Then you click about us, and then you go to case history one, and then. Extracts from the Lost Garden of Heligan. This is um, that's a display of a Heligan, but these are that is actually the ones down that you see in the videos from our Ram House. So basically, it's, it's quite a good read. Um, down here, it actually says um, they were finally restored. Uh, Where's it to? Here it is. Where's my finger? There it is. They were restored back in 1994. Well, that's when the restore when it was finished. Um, and they were installed. The original system was installed in 1880. Um, right, so let's. Um, best place to start on just running through these ramp pumps is um, up here at the top of the valley. Well, we're not at the top of the valley, we're just at the top of the hill. There's a valley there, and to my left there's a valley there. That's Heligan Gardens over there, where we pump the water. So, in that valley there, there is a small dam. Um, very little water runs in that one. Um, the start of the stream is literally just there. Uh, however, there's a lot more water comes in this one. There is a there's two dams. There is a sediment catchment pit, and then you have the uh, the normal dam, which uh, sends the water to the ram pumps, which is down over that hill ahead of us. So I'll drive on down, and then we shall wander on up to the sediment catchment pit, and we shall start from there. Right, we're um, at, the at the very top of what 
is starts as like the ramp pump system. This area here, when dug out prop, you know, when it should be all dug out, um, with debris and whatnot in here. This would act as like a. I'll be stood on this bank here, which would act as a bit like a dam, and this would act as a sediment catchment area. So all like bits of shit would just get stuck up here, um, stuck in that mesh there. Um, and if there is any, like any too much water coming down, then there is a overflow chute just here. So this here runs down into what would become the main dam. Right here we are at the dam. Um, again, this area here um, needs digging out. It's full of because ta because of the top tank being full of sediment um, it's caused this one here to fill now uh, so basically this needs digging out just as like the top one does and um, we've got a dam, ignore that pipe there, that's for a separate system which we don't use so basically any water feeding ramp pumps will go into that section there there's a sluice gate there which we can close off but we've removed it because it was um it was seized up, closed, and in that area is a pipe that has got a bit of a filter on the top, and that will go down and feed a, a sed uh, not sediment tank. It would be seeding a header tank to drive the ramp pumps themselves. Um, any excess water basically overflows on the overflow there. So just so you can see the, uh, the pipe and that heads off down to the drive tanks and this bit here is the overflow. Unfortunately due to the floods we've had down here at the beginning of this year the dam is not in best condition. Just, just there you can see a bung um, that's for uh, draining, the, re draining the reservoir to uh, dig it out. Well, I hope you lot appreciate this video because I've just cleared all this. We have no petrol, so I've just used one of these to clear this. And I've made a bit of a clearing down there all around the walls. And I am fucked. Anyways, from the reservoirs, there's also another reservoir up the other valley. They come out to pipes in there. You can see where the water's flowing in. This is like another, this is like a secondary uh, sediment catchment area. Um, and then, if you read on that uh, Green and Carter website, that that case study I showed you, you've got. It does mention a small domed unit building with a trough on one side. Well, that's the trough, and then you've got this here, which is inside there. This is act. This is now where that diagram co comes into play. Uh, this is the um, header tank. Uh, so, at the bottom of this, there is three drive pipes now that go down at roughly a 45 degree angle, all the way down, straight line, straight down there to where the ramp pump house is, 18 feet underground. What excess water there is that the ramp pump doesn't use goes out the overflow there, follows its track and down into that river just there. And then again if you read on the uh, Green and Carter case study they mention a peculiar looking free wall, you know, free walls um, place and when they come to, when they first discovered this, this was 
fall to ground level where I'm standing with mud up to here. So they would have had to dig all of this out by hand um, because it was just left derelict and you couldn't see a thing. I've had a good clear out around so you can see. And then obviously I forgot my torch again. Come back with that now. Right, after being numpty and going back to get the torch, this would have all been dug out by hand when they come to restore these. Very simple. 